Hello, everyone, and welcome to Presentation OG. I am Ashish Kaurav, and uh, we will be talking about fundamentals of AWS. Well, we have broken down this specific presentation into four parts. Four parts being the basics of AWS, where we talk about regions, budgets, credits, and limits, which is this one. The next one being, we'll talk about AWS EC2 instances, what they are, how, what is an AMI for the different instance types, what is a security group, how do you create secrets, SSH, stopping and terminating those instances. But the next two parts will be covered by George, and he will be talking about EC2, how do you set up an EC2 system? How do you connect to them using SSH? How do you set up your environments? What are EFS and EBS? Later, he'll also talk about connecting to these instances using VS Code and JupyterLab as remote systems. Without further ado, let's go to AWS. Well, this is how AWS would look to you or the AWS dashboard would look to you once you're able to log in. To create your own account, um, you can use your own Andrew ID or use your personal ID as well. It does ma matter for our specific use case. Once you're in your uh, AWS dashboard, this is how it will look like. It will give you a little bit of summary about what the different resources that you will be using and what has the different cost associated um, to your monthly uh, use. With that, let's look at regions. In terms of regions, we would suggest you to use the Ohio region, that is East US 2, uh, for the remainder of this course. We have historically seen this specific region to have better costs uh, in comparison to other regions, and hence we suggest this. Once you're in this region, you will see it uh, in this fashion here. Uh, now let's talk about the, the meat part of this specific uh, recitation, which is billing. Uh, to go to the billing dashboard, go to your username and then select billing dashboard. As soon as you come to the billing dashboard, you will see a summary of the cost associated to this specific month, a total forecast. And when you scroll down, you actually are able to see where does that money, uh, where is that money being spent? Uh, to get a little more granular insight into uh, how that money was spent. Historically, you look at bills, which is on the left hand, left hand side side pane. You go to bills and you're able to, if you expand your credit, you'll be able to look at what is the different uh, resource that you would use and how did you pay for that uh, specific resource. In my case, we am not paying anything with my card, but with credit, as you can see here. For example, let's look at March when I was a student, just like you in this course. Uh, you can also see that I would have used much more uh, of my resources uh, and would have used much more of my credit as well. Talking of credits, um, let's look at how do you redeem them. Um, similarly, you go to the left-hand side pane and click on credits. Once you're in this uh, credits dashboard pane, you'll be able to see the different credits that you have already um, associated to your account. Here, you'll be able to see the amount that is already used by you for that specific credit uh, credit that you redeemed and how much is remaining. To add credits to your account, you go to redeem credit here on the right-hand side. Click on this, add a permissional code that we sent to you via email. Uh, write down the security code and click on redeem credit. Going back, you'll be able to see your credit uh, here as you can see. Perfect. Now, to make sure that we don't overuse our credit and are able to uh, stay on top of our bills, we make sure that we create budgets. In the budgets dashboard, you'll be able to see the different budgets that you have sent for yourself so that you are notified in case you overexpend uh, any of the resources that you have been using. These are very critical and highly, highly uh, recommended because we've seen in, in past uh, semesters that. Uh, some students forget um, how much they're using and are overcharged on their actual accounts um, and spend money which ideally should be spent through credits. To make sure that that doesn't happen to you, we'll go ahead and create a budget. We'll create a cost budget. Name our budget. 
can call it 775 demo. This would be a monthly budget, a recurring monthly budget, as in the, the budget resets every month. And this budget will be for $50 as we provide you um, your coupons uh, in $50 increments thrice during the semester. We want to make sure that we are tracking all the services that we are using across AWS. So we press one, press next. We then come to the threshold pane where we add thresholds. Thresholds are basically thresholds which make sure when whenever they are hit in a budget, they send a notification to you. We suggest using 50% of the budget as a threshold and sending it to your sending. In my case, I want to send myself an email uh, if this budget, if this threshold is met. We also suggest you create another one at 80. That will be at $40 here and send yourself an email whenever that happens, just in case. Press on next, um, check the different actions that are attached to every threshold. Click on next again, um, review the budget that we have created and then create a budget. As you will see, we've created a successfully created a new budget, which will track how much we are using in a month. Um, and you will see this gets updated at the next time you visit, visit back. With that done, uh, we'll now talk about EC2 instances. To navigate to the EC2 dashboard, um, search for EC2 on the top left search pane in AWS, and you'll be greeted with the EC2 dashboard. Now let's talk a little more about EC2. EC2 stands for Elastic Cloud Compute, which is basically a service that AWS provides so that you can ask for almost a computer on AWS servers that you can use for your specific use case. Now, obviously no computers is alike. There are different types of computers or in their terms instances that AWS provides for you to use. You can look at the different types of instances by clicking on this specific uh, uh, label called instance types and you would find yourself greeted with a large number of possible instances that you have to choose from. To make it a little easier on you, uh, you can actually go to this specific website called instances.vantage.sh, where you'll be able to um, search for the specific type of instance that you want, depending upon uh, the kind of your requirements are. In specific, we will be looking for uh, instances that support GPU, they generally tend to be the P type and the G type. Um, so we would have to requisition that. Um, now there's a problem. Right off the bat, when you actually have an account yeah, with AWS, it won't allow you to requisition such large uh, and capable systems out of the box. You would have to sort of say request for an increase in limit of these, these types of instances and once the instances instance limit is increased by AWS, uh, which I'll show you how to request an instance uh, instance type limit increase, once that is approved by AWS, you can then go ahead and spin up systems uh, with those types to increase the limit for those types of systems. We go to limits and look for two, two types of instances running and requested. For both of these types of instances, we will have to re uh, request a limit increase. Let's talk about limit running instances first. Running instances are basically um, requisitions or, or requests for uh, creating and spinning up an on-demand um, system. In this specifically, you ask AWS, hey, I'm ready to give you some money. And for that, you have to give me um, an instance that will run for sure. Um, this is a little higher priced and has a almost a fixed rate. But there's a different type of instance as well, which is called requested instances. You would find them uh, marked as spot instance requests in the sense you request AWS uh, to 
allow you to spin up certain systems um, at a lower rate uh, in the sense that whenever AWS thinks it is, it has instance, instances which are not doing enough, they can allocate some resources to you. And in that time, you get to run your processes. These are obviously cheaper, but they have the possibility of being stopped or terminated depending upon uh, the criteria that you request on, which we'll talk about in the next video, but by they can be terminated or stopped by AWS. So that's the risk. But because they are cheaper, um, that is something that you should request an instance um, limiting fees for as well. All right, let's do it for running instances. As we talked about, we would be requisitioning, uh, we would be requesting a limit increase for P and G. All right. Let's click on request limit increase. Once the page loads up, you'll be able to see that you are already on the support center of AWS. Um, here you'll be requesting for two different types of limit increase, one being EC2 instances, the other being EC2 spot instances. Uh, in this case, let's look at EC2 instance types. We'll be requesting for our Ohio region our instance type in this case would be G. We suggest you request for a limit uh, value increase of eight. This basically means you'll be able to request systems which have vCPUs for up to eight, up to eight vCPUs of G type. We'd add another one again in the same region. This time our instance type will be P and our limit value would be eight. In this field, you can go ahead and describe that you are a student of CMU taking a course called Deep Intro Deep Learning 11785, and uh, you would be requ requiring um, this limit increased for experimentation purposes. Once you write that down, you can then go ahead, submit your request. By the end of this, you would be, you would request another uh, request, which is for spot instances, go ahead, do that with the same verbiage. Once that is done, you should be all set for the next recitation part. All right, see you on that side.